So are you ready? Okay. Go ahead and call the USD 49 Board of Education board meeting for Monday, March 25th to order. First uh, item of business is approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes 7-0. At this time, we'll open it up for audience participation. This is the one and only time during the meeting for the audience to participate. Do I have any takers? Huge audience. Nobody wants to. Okay, moving on. We will go to the best of the best awards. Um, tonight, our uh, best of the best for our staff member is Miss Eva Junk. She's a school counselor, and she was nominated by Paula Rice on behalf of the Roosevelt staff. Good evening. This is one of the hardest things that I get to do, um, but it's also one of my favorite. And I am here also on behalf of Carrie Lacey and Lincoln. Eva is one of our district school counselors, one of three. Um, we've got four elementary schools and the girls do an amazing job of balancing between the three, uh, the four elementary schools and our high, high needs with kids, but they do a great job. Um, Eva is one of those that just goes above and beyond and since I'm not very articulate tonight I'm just gonna read what I wrote too many times in education staff members are often asked to take on additional duties to help fill in the gaps to continue to provide the best for students our fantastic step staff step up and do it because of their love for our students one shining example of this is our school counselor Eva Young who every year is asked to take on more and more roles and responsibilities these additional roles and responsibilities are accepted by Eva with a nod of the head, a smile on her face, and a yes, all the while continuing to excel in every aspect of her core performance. This is what sets her head and shoulders above so many others. Eva is responsible for over 650 students and families, splitting her time between Lincoln and Roosevelt. Having the counselor role in two separate buildings pulls Eva in many directions throughout each day. Visiting classrooms, teaching lessons, sponsoring both school student councils, weekly and daily check-ins with students needing counseling, enjoying individual or group lunch opportunities with students are just a drop in the bucket of some of the things that she's expected to do. Eva is not only a counselor for our students and families, but she's also an active role in both building leaderships, acting as acting as part of multiple committees and serving in several leadership capacities in both schools. Despite being surrounded by daily stressors, enough to make most people want to give up, Eva continues to be a compassionate listening ear for all who are in need and helps shape our building into the happy, comforting, and joyful place that it is. Eva deserves more than a modest pat on the back, for she is indeed the best of the best. runner who beats me on several occasions so <laughs> our next nomination is for our student um, our student is Rhiannon uh, Cummin and she was nominated by Sandra Hickert thank you I often stand before the Board of Education at Learning Center graduations to emphasize the things that students overcome in order to graduate. Whether it's illness, loss of a family member, or some other life issue, we like to accentuate the challenges that the graduates had to overcome. But tonight, I introduce you to Rhiannon Cummin, who is a student who couldn't overcome. 
She couldn't overcome her passionate desire to become a nurse at the earliest age possible. Rhiannon came to us less than a year ago telling me that she wanted to be a nurse. She wanted the option of working at her own pace because she's determined to be a working RN by the age of 20. She replied that she, that she had no issue whatsoever driving from her hometown each day to attend the Learning Center here in Hayes. Since Rhiannon arrived on August the 15th, she has applied herself like few students have. She completed all of her cor courses for both her junior and her senior <coughs> year. She kept a part-time job at a restaurant working 20 to 25 hours per week. Rhiannon pays for all of her own gas to come to school five days a week. She's a friend to every student that walks in the lab. By May of this year, Rhiannon will have completed 17 concurrent credit college hours, and she has traded working the drive through lane for answering call lights at her hometown nursing facility as a certified nurse aide. She is poised to enter nursing school just three months after graduating with her cohort class in May of 2020. Society, not just the healthcare industry, is fortunate to have a citizen like Rhiannon Cummin, who is forging her future industriously and compassionately. Her family is here with her tonight to celebrate your selection of her as the best of the best for March 2019. Thank you for supporting alternative education and for helping make Rhiannon's dream come true. Thank you to our best of the best nominations and those that nominated them. Also, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Gellas, Tiger Burgers, and Handyman for Hire for supporting this um, fantastic award that we get to give out each month. Uh, next, we will move on to communications from other organizations. This includes the Early Childhood Connections Director's Report for March 25th, 2019, Early Childhood Connections Policy Council Meetings for February 25th, 2019, and Jobs for American Kansas Graduates Kansas presentation is the next thing in that. So we'll have Johnny Matlock and his students here. Yes, they are. So Johnny, if you, you and company want to come on up. All right. Well, thank you for allowing me to come and talk about uh, Jobs for America's Graduates. Thank you for having the foresight, administration, and school board uh, to launch this program. Um, it's, been a, it's been an honor to be there with, uh, with the students, and we're learning as we go, so to speak, but uh, I just hope I can share some of the, of the value of what we're doing there at Hayes High. Um, Jobs for America's Graduates is about connecting the dots, and uh, we're, we're connecting the dots between what they're doing uh, uh, in their futures, uh, careers, with what they're doing in high school. And uh, the end goal is to mentor these students to succeed inside and outside the classroom. And we have a, uh, an en engaging learning environment called project-based learning. And so everything that we do is very hands-on and very project-based. So we might be working on budgeting. We may be working on how to get a job, uh, exploring career interests, and developing a, uh, developing a path for them to, to attain their career goals. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, the JAG model uh, and some of the competencies, competencies a little bit later on. The pictures that you see up there are, um, we just recently uh, got back from attending the uh, JAG regional uh, uh, contest uh, where we were uh, competing in different areas. We competed in employability <coughs> skills, uh, we competed in public speaking, math, uh, project-based learning. Uh, mapping, mapping My Future. These were different projects that the kids did and they went down and competed. Uh, Mercedes Nuss broke into finals in employability skills. Uh, Serena Williams and Michaela Payne had a fourth place finish 
and they are alternates for state. Uh, Jonathan Rupp placed first place in math, and so he'll be representing us at the state conference uh, here in a little bit. Uh, uh, Zach Chance and Lucas Mater, uh, first place in students for service. Uh, they gave a presentation over our uh, Battle of the Badges blood drive and, uh, and, and, and took first place at regionals. Um, so what is uh, JAG-K? Uh, I work with 41 students. Uh, they're grades 10 through 12, um, divided into three classes. Uh, we have small class sizes so that I can, uh, it's, it's very relationship based, very mentor based. Uh, it's a very diverse group. 10% uh, of my students are in the top 25% of their class. 50% uh, are in the bottom 25% quartile. But they all have one thing in common. Uh, they have at least five obstacles uh, to graduation. And so what we're doing is to give them the tools to either overcome their barriers to graduation or, or, or teach them how they can work around those obstacles so that they can be successful uh, in the future. Painting a picture to, uh, for, to these kids that there is a better, there's a better for them after they graduate from high school. Um, the JAG model, uh, just a little bit about that. Um, uh, I've already told you about project-based uh, learning. And uh, um, uh, these are some of the, the, key, the key things to the, to the program. I think one of the neat things is the 12-month follow-up. So once the students graduate from high school, I'll be following them uh, for one year. Uh, at least contacting them once a month to see how they're doing on their career goals, uh, helping them with the resources, um, and that sort of thing. We talk about the JAG Advantage, uh, and the JAG Advantage, uh, giving, giving students an advantage to post high school, uh, whether they're going into the military, whether they're going into college, or two-year programs, or technical schools. Um, and there's three components to that. Uh, Project-based learning, something I already talked about. Uh, resiliency, and then employer engagement. Um, Resiliency is the ability to find the inner strength to bounce back from a setback or challenge. And that's something that we, we, we talk to the kids about because they've, they've got barriers to graduation. They are, they are um, um, uh, working to overcome those. So we're giving them tools and skills so that they can bounce back and so they can be successful. And I brought a couple of uh, students with me uh, tonight is to talk to you to relate to uh, their experiences. Uh, the first one that we'll talk is Marshall Perryman and he's our Vice President of uh, uh, Career Development and Leadership and then uh, Devontae Robinson will speak to you as well. Marshall. As Mr. Matlock said, uh, my name is Marshall Perryman, Vice President of Leadership and Career Development of the JAG-K Career Association. In this role, I work with Mr. Matlock to find guest speakers, help plan tours to colleges and or businesses, and help encourage students to broaden their horizon to future opportunities. One of the field trips I enjoyed was to Fort Hayes State University and the NCK Tech. They shared class offerings, met faculty, and let us see the facilities. I enjoyed seeing the college environment, something to look forward to after high school. It was very fascinating and helped me plan for the picture for what I want to do in the future. Besides trips and guest speakers, we also had in-class projects. One project I particularly found interesting was exploring how much money I might need while going to college. Just the basics, like money for an apartment, money for food, money for transportation, the cost of living. We were given a salary and looked at budgeting for the month. I realized I had money left over, so there is hope. <laughs> <laughs> Jack was a thing that has helped me more in a month than a whole school year. It has helped me immensely with grades, because my freshman year I ended with a 2.1, my sophomore a 2.6, I'm a junior now with a 3.75 GPA, wow. so that's one and a half more points. That's three whole letter grades. Jack has helped me push for bettering myself and giving me opportunities I couldn't pass up, like free ACT and work keys. It made my mom's life easier because she didn't have to fork over the 49.50 we do not have. It gave me quite a few scholarship opportunities for colleges, so I don't have to, so I don't have to go into student debt, which makes me, you know, one in one student. <laughs> Um, after college is said and done, I want to follow my grandfather's auto footsteps and be a part of the Special Forces as an officer in the Army. Serve my country for as long as I can, come back, join the higher patrolman to see what my uncle Trooper Todd has been bragging about all these years. And so in conclusion, I'd have two government paychecks and a nice house to support my loving family. <laughs> Hello, my name is Devontae Robinson. I'm a brother of eight and currently a transfer student from Oklahoma. 
Right now, I'm a junior in foster care, transferring into independent living, living with my stepmother, sister, and two brothers. So to have a program like Jack K really helps me out. The opportunities and advantages that comes with this program are really useful in the work field and beyond. Just being able to communicate with people on a business level um, has, has made a huge impact on my life and, on, and, on my, and my soft skills, excuse me. <laughs> Jack is a place where students, students can find out who they are and learn how to grow into mature adults. Yet in class, we are not boring or too formal. Though we make sure to have fun, uh, fun from time to time. We do all sorts of field trips and community services like trick or treat so others can eat or helping Red Cross collect blood donations. These activities focus on helping people and trying to make a name for JK. Trick or treat so others can eat to canned food to people that might have needed it by delivering it from house to house. We collected food for about 150 households. We also have tons of guest speakers that come in and talk about their lives. We've had people come in talking about their trips to Africa or how they uh, changed their lives for the better. We've even had the chance to meet a person who hacks uh, computers for a living. We also participate in numerous projects like ropes course at Fort Hayes State University for team building to teach, to teach students uh, with decision making and trusting friends. All of these things that we do help students acknowledge all the good that can happen in life. And being able to make long, lifelong friends that wants to be as successful in life as you do. I don't really know what I want to do for a living or how I will get there, but I do know that I want to make a difference in someone's life. I know that I will be, I will, I will be a somebody, a person that people could look up to. <clears throat> Maybe I could help people through their, through their darkest days with the tune and turn their, turn their blues into amusing jazz that moves them to hope. That's what keeps me moving. I remember days when I was so tired and depressed, I didn't even want to get out of bed in the morning. I remember when I used to sleep in a twin size bed with my three siblings in a house with no lights, water, or heat. I remember moving back and forth between houses that never felt like home, trying to find out who I was. Jack K gives people a purpose and helps with what student wants to do or become in the future. It's just one of the stepping stones in that student's life that sets you up for success in the end game. The program that will set me up for greatness. Thank you, Jack K. A quote that I put up a lot uh, uh, is by C.S. Lewis and it says, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. And uh, I think that's what Jag K is doing for, for these students, is giving them um, a brighter future so they can see that future and they can see that they, things can be different. The cycle can be broken. Uh, I mentioned the core competencies, um, 37 core competencies. And we, we, we want our seniors, as they graduate, to master these competencies in, in career development, job attainment, job survival, uh, basic competencies, competencies such as math and, and writing and communication skills, uh, leadership and self-development, uh, personal skills. Uh, uh, those are, those are the, the six categories of the, of the competencies that we work on. Um, by the numbers, I'll just flash these up here. I think you had those in your uh, presentation there that they gave you. 81 programs, uh, JAG-K programs now in 65 schools across Kansas, and it seems to be growing um, all the time. Um, the career organization is, uh, is a club that we have at Hayes High that's, that's for JAG-K. And I think, Paul, I think you were at the uh, initiation uh, ceremony for that, and I appreciate that very much. Um, these students that I have sometimes are not the joiners, but this is something that every one of them are a part of. And we have an offer, officer elections, and we offer uh, ways that they can develop their leadership skills. Career, develop, uh, career organization is... is is the, the organization in which all the things in JAG-K is, is done uh, through this. Um, presentations, I just wanted you to kind of see what we've been doing. And uh, you can see up here, uh, how many of those? 
Uh, these are presentations that we've made in the community. You can see where my name's at the, uh, you know, after the first four, but after that, it's JAG-K students that have been going out in the community and making presentations about JAG-K, or they've been talking about uh, when we were doing the, uh, the Battle of the Badges uh, blood drive, they were going out and making presentations about that. Um, fall guest speakers. Uh, wow, we just had a really busy uh, a semester. Uh, from Gail Keel coming in and talking about interview skills uh, to uh, touring cross manufacturing um, and uh, just a lot of, of a variety of things. Um, uh, and, and this semester we've been to Hess Services, uh, we've toured Next Tech facilities, we've uh, uh, went to Hare Academy uh, for a tour. We've been working with the TRIO program that's out of Great Bend, the Educational Opportunity Center. Dr. Mary Jo Rooney has been coming in once a month and doing a mental health segment of taking care of you. And so uh, we've been uh, learning about mindfulness and how to, uh, to take care of some anxiety. Uh, JAG Day at the Capitol, Governor Kelly signed a proclamation recognizing JAG K. And in fact, uh, I'm taking three <coughs> students tomorrow. We're going to Topeka uh, to meet our legislators and spend a day um, uh, at the Capitol. Um, Eagle TV Radio is coming in uh, this next week. Uh, Wyoming Technical School, uh, diesel engines and, and uh, mechanics uh, is going to be coming in to talk to us. So we have a variety of things and, uh, that we bring in to kind of op uh, open their minds to opportunities that they might have in the future. So um, thank you. Thank you very much for, for allowing us to do this program. I really think it is making a difference and uh, as these two young men uh, have shared with you tonight. So thank you very much. Any questions or anything? Yeah. Uh, first, I want to thank sure. you for taking this leadership. I know you left a different type of job to this. So uh, it is. It's a little bit you. different than rehearsing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many uh, students do you have again? I don't think I. Can. We have 41 students. Uh, yes, in the program. Uh -huh. And what are you looking at for the next? How many will complete this their senior year? They'll be senior. right. I think I have 12 seniors. 12 seniors. And right now we're looking at uh, I think. Uh, um, maybe 11 are on track uh, to graduate and uh, we have one that's still at the uh, hoping to, to finish at the learning center so you know a few of the students it's different paths mm -hmm. and so we try to find uh, to support them in that way I still try to follow them and try to help them along in that so I have three students uh, that are will be completing their uh, high school diploma through the learning center and uh, what do you look are you looking to scale up the number next year or just replace the 12 uh, we're going to keep it between 40 and 45 uh, I think and uh, so we'll be adding uh, we added three students that semester mm -hmm. and uh, and we'll add uh, probably about eight uh, eight more sophomores uh, to the uh, to the program okay so yeah so what can the board do to help help this program grow well and I think help. I think one thing that we are, that we're trying to do that I've been trying is just to spread the word about JAG you know, and, and what, uh, what, what we do. And, and a large part of it is employer engagement. So I'm, I'm constantly looking for people that would be willing to come in and talk to our students or maybe willing to do a job shadow, uh, you know, so the student can go out and, 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 and follow them for a while. I think these are um, uh, great opportunities. So um, yeah, uh, that would be really helpful. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you, thank, mm -hmm. and thanks for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I Appreciate want to say thank it. you yes. to the, the gentleman coming tonight. Yeah. I mean, what courage it takes to come in front of a group like this, and don't let them know this is going on YouTube, but, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just very proud of them for that. And I guess yes, the one question too. I had for you, Mr. Matlock, was you had talked about the obstacles, mm -hmm. that they have five, optical, five obstacles for graduation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's more that just they have to meet five. Can right. you give me some of those examples? Um, it could be anything from um, uh, maybe it's a single parent home, uh, maybe uh, in, in foster care. That would be that would be one. Maybe uh, a low academic uh, achievement. Maybe they're a grade behind, uh, so those would be a barrier uh, to graduation. Could be uh, could be poverty. Could be um, uh, yeah, just a, a lot of different factors involved. And we meet. We have an advisory team uh, that meets, and uh, uh, the list is. Uh, we we sift through those. We try to find. We want to find students that 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 jag. They would benefit from what JAG has to offer, but that, that, that we feel like also they, they want to succeed. Mm -hmm. They want to succeed. 
And so uh, with those kinds of students, Jag can make a difference in because we can, we can come alongside and, and, and be a mentor. And um, sometimes it's just letting them know, yes, you can do this. You can do this. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long or what the path is, mm -hmm. uh, just as long as you finish. Thank you for all you do with this. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it very you. much. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to uh, school, spot, school spotlights. Shana? Yes, we have a few of those. Those were attached. Um, Head Start, we have some winners at the state level, um, including a family leader, Dr. Hatton, and then Kelly Riley was support staff. Carla Bixman, Teacher of the Year, Alexandra Hagerman, Alumni High School Senior Scholarship, and Caitlin Proberts, you can see there is post-secondary education <coughs> scholarship. So congratulations to them. I'll make that a little larger. And then also Trey McRae was named the, to the All-American Athletic Conference basketball team. He's a senior at Hayes High, so you can see his stats there. We congratulate him. Also, our seventh grade boys middle school team um, took first place in the Western Athletic Conference, both A and B. Their season record there is 26 and 4. As you can see, Kate Scott and Ben Oberly coached those young gentlemen. So, congratulations to them. And then we have a list of congratulations. Actually, 23 high school DECA students competed um, at the State Career Development Conference. That was at K State in early March. So winners, you can see their places there. We had Isabel Brown, Callie Liker, and Brianna Fornash first place with community service. Paige Polifka, Denson and Allison Hillebrand <coughs> first place with public relations. JC Robinson and Ryan Hernandez hospitality and tourism operations took second place. Connor Teagett, Peyton Thorell, and Keaton Markley first place with sports and entertainment marketing operations research. Fifth place for Landon Dinkle and Lauren Kent in creative marketing. Fourth place in entrepreneur promotion for Brooke Denning, Cassie Pro, and Madeline Waddell. Matt Goodale took seventh in innovation plan. Peyton Nuremberger and Katie Brin first place with the franchise business plan. First place in business growth for Abigail Dickinson. And then Emma Fonestill, Joe Anna Carrillo Malandado, third place for International Business Plan, Cheyenne Shoemaker and Carson Ackerman, eighth place with their Integrated Marketing Campaign event, Trevor Mai, tenth place in his Integrated Marketing Campaign, and then Carson Ackerman again, <coughs> individually third place with the Principles of Marketing. So congratulations to all those students. And then we had the ambassadors from O'Loughlin. They led a service project to help the ARC project, um, and that's for children and adults with disabilities. So there's a new facility um, in the works, and it's in fundraising stage. So they help promote the project throughout the school, and they raised $626. So we're proud of those young students for their service learning and giving back to the community. There was more, Shannon. There was more. I missed them, sorry. One more page? Nope. Nope. Oh, maybe I it's going to say, I didn't think so. Attach. But the next page is the report of the superintendent, if you want me to move on to that. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Keep okay. going. Well, um, Superintendent Thinson couldn't be here, but he put this together and thought it would be um, helpful to the board. It's really just a different way of looking at our capital outlay expenses, and Keith's going to go over that in his financial report. But you could see um, the first pie chart there is the total 5.3 million that's what we have in capital um, capital outlay and then the second is different in that it's the 3.5 million that we actually um, plan to spend we always have the carryover this year it's like a 1.7 carryover it'll be more like 1.5 um, moving um, down in the next couple of years but it gives you the percent I know we talk a lot about facilities and how we use capital outlay dollars but in that you can see that what we spend capital outlay dollars on are what's appropriate. Now, probably the items in there um, we could look at would be, as we've talked about, those maintenance salary and benefits could be moved at some point if we felt like general fund had, um, we had enough dollars in there um, to pay those out of general fund. Of course, your lease expenses in time and as leases come off, then that would generate more revenue to 
to put towards facilities, but just wanted to give you another way of looking at those large dollar amounts that, um, you know, are a big part of the decisions we make. So that's really, that's all I have, Mandy. Okay. Thank you, Shanna. Uh, we'll move on to the financial report then. Okay. Um, let's see. Capital outlay, there's a... Uh, Right there. Okay, what you're looking at right there is a running total of expenditures from our capital outlay fund. Let's talk a little more specifically about what we've been doing this past month. Uh, technology um, spent $11,864 on iPad repairs. It was the first semester uh, repairs um, that came through. Uh, maintenance uh, spent $45 thousand dollars and this includes $6,500 for roof repair to this building, $11,000 in uh, HVAC filter replacement and we have also ordered um, parts to rekey Hayes High, Hayes Middle and Roosevelt Elementary totaling $18,769. That leaves $86.79 for miscellaneous repairs around the district. Uh, talking about the maintenance salaries, we spent $21,824 for maintenance salaries and benefits out of capital outlay. And finally, there was a $500 payment uh, from this account to Fort Hayes State for the Beach Smith Performing Arts Center for a winter concert. So that's a look at capital outlay for the month. Questions? <coughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, Keith. Thank you, Keith. All right, moving on to the consent agenda and everyone can see the items listed there. I'd like to make a special note of some personnel transactions. We have four retirements in the district. Um, Mark Kellerman with seven years, Fred Fries with 13 years, Art Liker with 24 years, and certainly last but not least, Coach K with 34 plus years. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Been moved by board member Adams, second by board member O'Borney. Is there any discussion? I have a couple questions on the uh, appointment of the new treasurer. What's why are we doing that? Nicole Corey is going to be on maternity leave, so we're required to have a replacement for her as she's up for that. And then um, I thought Russ was here. I'd hate Please. to have him show up and not have a question asked. So. Mm. Um, <laughs> The, the surplus property and the, the reason this jumped out at me and was because the bus had like 8,800 miles and then I saw the small print that said it had a speedometer replaced but uh, even with, when you add the mileage in from that it's the bus was 7,700 miles or 77,000 miles thereabouts I guess I just I know why we're replacing it because it looks like it's at the 15 year mark I guess my question would be is if in 15 years we're only putting 77,000 miles on it, do we really need that bus? Well, we are re we're surplusing the bus, so you know we bought two new buses this year. So we're just each year we buy a couple, and then I surplus a couple to keep that fleet number the same. So it's just one of our older buses uh, has a lot of maintenance issues. So keeping it around, it will be end up putting more money into it than what we're going to get out of it. So. <coughs> But, and, and that, I guess my question though is, is if you got, uh, that's, it's, it, it's averaging 5,100 miles a year. And so if, if that few of miles, it seems like it's a big investment to drive 5,100 miles. Do we need, do we really need it? It's just a spare bus is what it is. We have two spare buses that we use when it broke down. So it's a spare bus. So I'm selling it and another one's going to come off of our route. And then one of the new ones I got will go on to a route. So it's kind of a rotation from route to spare bus. And that spare bus now is going to be sold. So it doesn't get driven very much just when we're busy or another bus breaks down. And that bus particular one, uh, I've been here six years. And when I first got here, uh, they had bought that as a spare bus because we didn't have already any spares. So it was bought just a, under the 20 grand, under 20 grand back when I first got here. So it's been sitting here for a while and we use it, like I said, it's not driven very much, but it's just driven when we're busy or we have a route that's broke down bus and we drive it. So, so it's just a bus we're getting rid of because we just don't use it as much. But we're buying a new one to replace it, right? We're buying a new one that's going to be onto a route and right. then one of, the route buses, one of our worst route buses is then going into a spare bus. 
But if I don't have extra buses, then you know when a bus breaks down, I have no other option. It, the only thing that, and I don't want to beat this too much, but we can keep buses for 25 years, right? Correct. And we're replacing them at 15. But would it make more sense to just keep a bus like this? I mean, I don't. Maybe this one's got more problems than it's worth. But find one that doesn't, and keep it for the to 20 years or 25 as a if it's only driving 5,100 miles a year, and save the hundred and some thousand dollars we're spending on a bus. Well, if we want to keep trying to incur or upgrade our fleet, we you know I don't want to keep extra buses sitting around. I want to keep the fleet number where we're at. We're pretty safe where we're at just enough to get by so if we keep a bus then I'm going to have extra buses here but I do need to buy continue to buy buses to keep that fleet rotating through so if that answers your question I guess I feel we need to keep buying buses to to keep our fleet going and then continue to get rid of our older buses like if I put new tires like this bus could use some tires put new tires on it it's going to be worth the tire going to be worth more than what I'm probably going to get out of the bus so if we continue to put money into them, you know, then when we get rid of them, we put a lot of money into them and not going to get nothing out of them. And you said we traditionally have two spares? I have two spare buses, yeah. And this is, these two are, are two of our spare buses, yes. So if I don't get rid of buses, then you're saying don't buy new ones? Is that, or? It just seems that, you know, I, I, Maybe we can talk some other time about okay. it outside the meeting. And sure. I do appreciate the rotation schedule keeping us current. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, I mean, we came a long ways in the five or six years we started that five-year plan. I mean, we came leaps and bounds on cars, suburbans, and buses, and it's been a great thing for the district, and hope we can continue to do that. But this is just one way that we just keep, keep the fleet number the same, keep rotating those older buses out. That, you know that it does help keep it our maintenance costs the more we get newer ones less maintenance we're putting into buses and and downtime with the kids just because i'm curious where do you sell these at so i'm on purple wave it's an auction that goes all over the united states so everybody across the united states can see it i told her she should just buy a bus <laughs> <laughs> any other questions for russ thanks russ thanks russ Thanks. Any other questions about consent agenda items? Right. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes 7-0. <coughs> Moving on to old business. First item is the Hayes Middle School student device purchase. Yes, yeah, Scott's here to um, being chair of the tech committee, so he will go over what was sent to you last week, um, the additional information um, from our last meeting. If you remember, this was new business, um, I think it was the end of February, so we will ask the board to make a decision this evening. I guess in addition, there are teachers in case there are questions. I know last time there were questions, so we want to make sure we have all the information for anyone who may need it this evening. Okay. Good evening. Uh, so what you will see attached tonight, uh, the conversation at the last meeting about the uh, touch screen uh, did go back and you'll see in the middle two columns, the Chromebook, uh, we threw in the non-touch option there uh, next to it. Uh, the interesting part about that, uh, why there's a different model number there. The 3189 versus 3180, uh, if you go with non-touch, there is no reason to have a flip over uh, two in one device. Um, so you have to step down a model to the 3180 that is just the clamshell uh, with no touch. All in all, it's I think roughly about a $40,000 savings there between the touch and non-touch option. Um, and that, that was the big addition to this. You can see down at the bottom, however, on the four-year total investment, um, that puts the non-touch option at 276,000, uh, which is still over that 254 on the iPad. So, um, the next slide attached, the last meeting I know we had attached in there a lot of uh, 
schools that we talked to and a lot of it was Chromebook. The reason was we had reached out to a lot of Chromebook schools. So what I had gone back and pulled was the digital learning survey from last year. Uh, they indicated half the districts, over half the districts in the state had uh, done the survey. So pulled this data to show uh, what devices are being used across the state. Obviously, you know, no surprise, Chromebooks and iPads are the, the front runner there. Um, the issue of touch, uh, we did go back to the middle school staff uh, just to gather that data about how often the device is used in the touch capacity. Um, also area of instruction so you can differentiate between core and elective. And then uh, if we were to not do touch or not have that capability, how would that impact uh, positive, negative, uh, neutral? Um, so that, the graphs are there on that, but then also attached below that. Same, same responses, only with the fourth question of explaining uh, why they answered what they did on question three. So all of that <coughs> gathered back up and attached tonight. Um, it's a, uh, Shan already hit on it there. There are staff here. If there are questions uh, that I can't answer that they'd be better apt to answer. But I guess at that point we'll, we'll take questions. And I probably should add, uh, with all this information, it did go back out to committee and come back. Uh, the recommendation from the committee still stands as the iPad is the recommendation. With the touchless Chromebook, mm -hmm. would you be looking into buying mice? They, they would still have a trackpad on the device, like a, just a, your traditional laptop style. It just wouldn't have that, that touch interface, but I guess the, the thought of having mice, you know, that, that conversation didn't come up. And part of the reason that the iPad is cheaper overall <coughs> is that the number of devices is so much different, that 40, 40 device difference so that <coughs> faculty. That is part of it. The other part of it um, uh, talked about last time on that warranty piece. Uh, if you wanted to include the three-year warranty on the iPad, you'd have to include back in that 60, I think it's roughly about 60,000. Uh, the reason that that was not recommended with the iPad is because currently over four years, we've spent just shy of 30,000. But that's on the entire fleet of about 2,100 iPads. So where we're talking 680 roughly iPads here, it just didn't make financial sense to spend that 60,000. <laughs> I do want to thank you and the committee for going back and getting more to answer that question about not what we want, but why and how we're using it. That does help fill in some of the gaps that I had okay. initially. I've said uh, multiple times my thoughts on this decision, so I mean, I'm not going to rehash everything. Um, I'm also not trying to take this out on Scott or your group. I realize, you know, you guys are just trying to bring this stuff in here. It's, at this point, it's the process of this whole thing that frustrates me. We can absolutely get by without touch screens, without a doubt. Um, probably 90% of the other districts out there can get by without other touch screens. But yet, for some reason, we can't here at USD 489. Those other districts also do it and save money, but again, we don't seem to be able to do that. And I know we can also go with lower cost Chromebooks and things like that, which a lot of the other districts do. Um, but again, for some reason, we can't do that here. Um, I also found many of the comments, I guess a polite way to put it is very perplexing, such as without the touch screen, it'd be hard for middle school students to take notes on paper and keep them organized. Seriously, have we really fallen that far to where our kids uh, can't keep their notes in order now on, on paper and pencil? Uh, I can't grade a device that isn't a touchscreen. Again, how do others do it, but yet we can't. Many of them uh, talking about copy and paste, because I guess that isn't possible with anything other than an iPad. Or better yet, a touchscreen, we have higher quality education. I'll be honest, I wasn't aware that touchscreens were that powerful and could do that type of stuff. At the end of the day, it's just it's frustrating, like I said, that we go through because all of this should have been, it, it shouldn't be looked at now, it should have been looked at all the way along here because it seems at the end of the day, it was made, the, the, the decision was made and everybody's mind was made up that we're going with iPads and we're gonna find every reason we can as to why we shouldn't look at anything else. I can honestly say that it, 
at the end of the day, we, the thing we have to look at as a board is, is this the most important area to be spending money? And right now, I can't say that it honestly is. We have enough other things going on that we, we can't even pass a bond for that matter. But, and in my opinion, it's awful hard to go back and ask a community to support a bond when we can come up with money and spend more money than we need to to get by. So for those reasons, I won't be supporting this. I was just curious, Scott. Did we have? Did we look at any other brands other than Dell and I and Apple? Uh, we we did have a quote come in. Uh, I believe it was for Lenovo Chromebook, but it came in higher than the Dell. And I, I was while we were sitting here, I just pulled up a Chromebook on Dell's website, the thirty one eighty. What are do you? What are the specs on it? How big a hard drive? How much <coughs> memory? The uh, they're 32 gig hard drive, 4 gig of RAM, um, not not too much else. I mean, the the Chromebooks are a pretty simple running system. Well, I don't want to rehash a bunch of issues either. Uh, I do want to point out we. Uh, I, unless Keith corrects me, I thought he told us earlier we spent eleven thousand dollars this month on iPad repairs. So that. Makes me wonder why in March we're spending that if we're only had 30,000 in the life of these. But um, I, one of my concerns is the process, but I don't know that it's specific to technology. And I think it's, I mean, I think it's a board issue and I think it's an administration issue as to how we're bidding out projects. Uh, we've gone to this construction management process which doesn't go out and give us competitive bids it allows us to have somebody go hand select bids uh, technology to pick on it is we go out and pick a brand and then we figure out how to make it fit and those aren't good ways to save money they're not they're not sound ways to do this if we think it uh, that tablets the way to go we ought to look at the different brands on the market that service that need if the touch screen is that important we should look at whether it be tablets or iPads, two-in-ones, whatever they are, uh, Dell is not the only brand. There are lots of other brands, and I'm not aware of many governmental entities, uh, especially those in this community, that, that go about it this way. Now, with the computers, I know we have the opportunity that we don't have to send out formal RFPs because most of these are set on state contract, but mm -hmm. I did go look at the state contract and the discounting that's done, and just to compare Lenovo and... Dell, Dell gives, I believe it's a 10 to 15 percent discount, and the Lenovo's are about 35 percent. And so, and if I'm wrong on that, I, you know, I'd be happy to hear that, but it just seems, you know, and, and so it, it makes it easier to, you don't have to do the formal process, but you, the, the question is why aren't we looking at other brands, and why are we brand name specific? It, it's, that, it just doesn't seem like that's the smart way to do this, but yeah. Well, I'm actually going to speak in disagreeing with my colleagues here. I think that we entrusted a technology committee, directed that, and on our part, we probably should have put a board member on that. I think it's something we may want to do in the future. But I, I appreciate the effort and the work in, and I think the fact is that you're closer to what the students do need and what they don't. We're forming uninformed opinions often whereas you're there in the classroom with them and maybe closer to the research so i support you and i will support this motion the uh, motion one because there are three motions <coughs> i actually have the same idea as paul I was thinking maybe in the future the, a way to to change some of this might be to have a board member on that committee as well and i'm not sure what that would look like but we've never done it i don't know why we don't I don't we know used why to. We don't. Well, why there used to be one on there? And maybe that's a change we need to look at for next year. Well, the question becomes <coughs> if you have a board member on it, what does that change in light of what Paul said? I, well, well, if, if we don't know and were to just take their opinion, being on the board wouldn't, or on the committee wouldn't help you, would it? I, I, Give our perspective, which yeah. they need to. But I would suggest putting this on the agenda for a board retreat to come back. Not not uh, debating it here at this point. Noted. Well, I'm going to come out in favor of the motion, uh, the option one. Yeah, we got three. 
I think the board has asked, I know the board has asked the committee to come up with a year, uh, four year cycle, and you've done that. You, um, we also asked you to come up with budget uh, estimates that are smooth, smoother than before, where it's not a roller coaster, so every year it comes out about the same, so we can plan ahead on these things. We've been talking about this for quite a while, and we know the, the, uh, the budget we had to work with, so I don't think that's a big surprise to us. And you've worked hard to keep uh, within that budget. And I agree that the committee and the teachers are closer to the students than we are, so I actually respect your position and your opinions. However, that doesn't mean next year we can change things up and uh, uh, put a board member on the committee or, or have some more discussions as the process goes on. So, thanks. I do appreciate it coming in so much. I mean, you know, you had up to 290 there to spend, and you came in at a lower bid as well. <coughs> Not exactly spending everything just because it was there. Appreciate that. So, <laughs> if at some point down the road we decide to do a switch over to Google, you can put the Google Drive on an iPad, right? Yes. If you were, um, if you wanted to decide to, I guess, adopt that that Google. Uh, ecosystem uh, it would work it doesn't work as seamlessly as it would um, that I mean that's to say you know Microsoft you know try and when we first started with the iPads trying to get it to work on the iPads things things get better and I think there's becoming more inter interoperability between them but every every brand I think is gonna focus more on their their own sphere than others in. With, yeah. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, with the Google push, that would make me a little hesitant to want to invest four years on the iPad. I never really put much thought into that further, but I just felt like there was a little push from Google for a while here. Yeah. The only thing I would ask is that when do we look at the high school adoption again? The high school adoption, mm -hmm. uh, they're in year one, so we're three years out on that. Because, uh, okay, so uh, then again, directing and maybe from the board direction is that uh, three years out, it's not too soon to begin thinking about that because, mm -hmm. you know, three years is, you know, generations of computers from now and I'm not sure that the differences that people are noting are going to be that evident as we go three years in the future. So conducting a, maybe doing a, a, a more thorough design or a better design as we begin to look for that. Because I think that's probably a place that may make some real sense to begin to look at it and give us the time to do it. So to the tech committee, direct to begin to consider a move, even if it's three years in the future, because I think next year we're back to L. What's yeah. next year? So next year would be three, four, five. The year okay. after that, K-1-2. But as I talked uh, last meeting, there, there does exist the potential that uh, K through five, that, that K one two might have to get bumped up, and the only reason I say that is because we would be pushing uh, K one two. Uh, we'd have to go out six years on those iPads, and I I know we're going to start seeing battery issues in the next couple years on those, and I'm I'm skeptical that Apple will release an update for those devices. They were on That's the chopping block last year, and we we got the update. Concern. So with the tech committee, whatever we vote on tonight, it's time to not disband but begin the work to begin mm -hmm. to looking at what we may do so we're not feeling pressured against the wall because i know we want to get the bid in we've got time to do it but i'm really more interested in the high school because i think that's a major time and opportunity to make a change if we're going to make a change yep at that what the uh, k12 you were talking about is that mm -hmm. the same they was purchased at the same time as these devices. Yes, they were. They were all purchased at the same time. What we we purchased three five was the iPad Air one, uh, K through two. We purchased the iPad Mini two. I just wasn't sure if there was an ability to. I'm not because I know you were probably planning to sell off the 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 older iPads that we have here. I wasn't sure if I was able to. to save some of those or use some of those for that. But if they're relatively they're, the same age, they're relatively the same age. It's easier. At this point, uh, working on the airs is easier than the minis, just size-wise. But uh, 
there is the thought of holding some of those back to bolster uh, those lower grades as we move forward if we have to. Mm -hmm. Comments or questions? Someone would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of option one for $238,000, which is an iPad option. Second. It's been moved by Board Member Adams, second by Board Member O'Borney. Is there any further discussion? I feel like I need to understand more of where we are wanting to go as a board Chromebook wise because it just puts me in just I'd hate to vote for the iPod iPad and in two years there's the switch over to a different platform I wish I understood technology a little bit more and I didn't have such a I have spacey vote <laughs> four different types of devices yeah. including Apple and HP and Dell and I use Drive on all of them. You do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Interchangeably, awesome. seamlessly, without problem. Well, and if you switch to the Google Classroom, you could alleviate Canvas, which wasn't ever priced, but that costs us money, does it not? It does. So. And I don't know that there was necessarily a push by anybody on the board to go to that. I just think it's something we should at least evaluate and make sure we've looked at all of that stuff. And that, that was, that's been my question all along, is how are all these other districts across the state able to do it and save money, but we can't. I, and I, nobody's answered that yet. I was using drive off on my phone today in the middle of BFE nowhere, so. <laughs> You're using what? Drive, Google Drive oh, off my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? I'm gonna call for the vote and I'm gonna have a show of hands. All those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. All those opposed, same sign. One, two, three. Motion passes, four, three. Thank you, Scott. And Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Thank you. Next is the bond review. Dana, do you have something on this for us to discuss? You know, um, in visiting with John, we just want to keep it on the agenda so that there's a direction from the board as to where you all want to move with this. You heard from DLR and the group um, a few meetings back. What was attached, added to this um, agenda was information about each building specifically. I think someone had asked that. So other than just board discussion as to what next steps are, I think that's the purpose of having it on the agenda, no action unless you all decide on something. I would make one comment based on a concern I have. As I was signing checks, there was a quite a sizable check that goes to DLR for a schematic. And I guess before we and keep asking for more schematics or different schematics, uh, in my opinion, I would like to know the cost of those moving forward. Okay. So we don't just keep asking for things and then rack up this huge bill, because it was a big check. So <laughs> what, what was it for? A schematic? Was that for this well, they or are, Oak Park? They are, yeah, involved in the Oak Park. Is it on the Oak Park? Well, it I doesn't say on there, so I don't know. I didn't see. Just we could clarify. 52,000. At that price, I would say it's tied to Oak Park, but okay. I will follow up. Okay. That's a Thank good you. question. <clears throat> uh, did John uh, come back with any information about the uh, needs and long-term planning? I think we'd asked about that. We had had a bid. We didn't, we didn't move forward at the purchase. That was to look at long-term planning in terms of replacing the physical systems. Right. No, I, don't. I think he's still working on that. Okay. That was kind of put on hold because we had the bond on the table, but right. we said we'd come back to that. Was, I can check on that with him, sure. Because I think that was part of the consideration of uh, some of the board members' concerns mm -hmm. about doing some longer-term visioning planning. Before making a decision, okay. And I guess maybe the other part, although I, I hate meetings, to be honest with you, but <laughs> I'm wondering if we might do a separate um, non-formal time to talk freely about this at a time we aren't trying to conduct regular business. Like a work um, session? I'm proposing yes, I, although I 
want no more meetings in my life, but I, I think this is probably necessary, and it's particularly to be free form where you can get up and sketch ideas and bounce ideas around. Yeah, I would suggest I so. not in our normal business meeting because it just is, needs more time. Yeah. There are a few Sounds months, well, I know May's crazy, but maybe then June where we have one meeting, maybe I that would be a better a, time to schedule. As a retreat to sure. talk about facilities and facilities and maybe at that point we'd have that longer term plan. I don't know where we're going to go with that. I mean, we, we have a vast number of ideas that are out there. Um, some are better than others and the effort's been made. So, But I'd like time to just freely talk about it. And myself, I think better if I have a whiteboard I can draw on. So I think we've, I think we've talked about it a little bit too. And I think I mean I would, depending on the cost, if it's insane, obviously I wouldn't. But I think I'd even support hiring a company if we had to to look at some sort of a long-term plan because we seem to be struggling with that a little bit. Yeah. And so and that is what I know. That's what we were. We, that we were looking that at. That some of that work had been done, and then it was put on hold because of the bond with the architect. So that I believe is what Paul was what referring to. And I think really just to know the last time DLR and the group presented, it's if we wanted to move forward, we could move forward and do like a you know. Uh, mail-in ballot in June and, and if that's the timeline but I'm hearing you all say you're not ready for that oh, you want some time and, I, and I'm looking for a retreat and, right. just, just work for session. this or work session I'm sorry and also isn't there the, the election for new school board members is coming up when is that is it November? it will be this fall the June deadline fall. to file is June, June 1st okay 3rd. I didn't know if it was this summer or this fall it'll be in the fall no. okay we got changed in that. There would be that's legislation. Right. You're so right. right. If you You're right. Many, that's why you got extra months on the. I know. That's why I get an extra six <laughs> months on mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Shannon, I would uh, ask that we add, add this to a separate venue and make sure that we include long-range term yes. facilities planning. Okay. I yep. think we have the notes. Thank you. Okay. Moving on next to the Roosevelt Elementary School and Hayes Middle School roof bids. Yes, Rusty was here um, the last time, and then the um, bids are attached. So we have two cover sheets. Um, we would need action on Roosevelt and then separately on um, Hayes Middle School. And as you can see, the um, option for Roosevelt is to prove the High Plains roofing, the low bidder there for um, Roosevelt and then following that is the motion to approve Ray roofing for Hayes Middle School and you can see the financial consideration there they are coming out of different budget years you can see that as well so those cover sheets were done based on the information that was given to you last time and the materials attached so mm -hmm. I wasn't here at the last meeting were there any major concerns or questions that you guys were needing answered I don't believe so. Not that I can recall. Okay, if not, someone would like to make a motion? Two separate motions, correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, I'll move to approve the High Plains Roofing Inc. Uh, bid for the Roosevelt uh, School Roof. <coughs> Second. Second. Is there any further discussion on this? It's been moved by board member Walker, second by board member O'Borney. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes 7-0. have someone who would like to make a motion for the Hayes Middle School roof bid. I will. Okay. Motion to approve Ray Roofing as the low bidder for the Hayes Middle School roof bid project for fiscal year 2019 budget. Second. Is there any discussion or questions on this motion? I'd just like to point out that these last two bids were both sent out with RFPs and we got competitive bids and it's awfully nice when that happens. Anything else? Moved by Board Member Young, second by Board Member O'Borney. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion <coughs> passes 7 0. Moving on to new business, we have the Hayes High School and Hayes Middle School safe entrance bids. Hmm. Is there someone here who's presenting something for that? 
No, I know Rusty touched on that the last time he's out of the country and will be back, but he wanted to make sure it was included with the new business this evening so that as you look through these materials, if you have questions, we can make sure we get it to you and we'll ask for your action at the next meeting. Well, I, I, I was curious. I noticed when <coughs> Keith was going over the capital outlay, you mentioned something about rekeying. There was a, a sum that was taken out for rekeying. Is that not part of this or is that a separate? thing for safe entrance separate separate yeah. i think that encompasses their redoing the lot the internal locks and having master keys for entrances and other keys for the internal okay i noticed on the deal here it shows we have eighty six thousand two hundred fifty seven uh dollars for the security interest through grants, um, our portion of the payments is 16693 Sarah, do you know, is that what we have? So, is, will some of the money from like the auction? I the believe the $38,000 be is coming from the USD 49 Foundation and it was labeled as a grant, but it's actually the- oh, Okay, so that's actually part of, part of it that's going okay. towards that already. Okay, okay. So the 16, 16 <coughs> and the other the addition. other portion of that is the state of Kansas uh, gave funds um, as a safety <coughs> grant too. So part of that funding is going to assist in those projects as well. So the sixteen six ninety three would be in addition, out of pocket basically that that we would have to come up with, correct? <coughs> Lance, that's how I'm reading that, and so we can make sure we get a little I more just, clear so with that. If we could use that stuff, I mean, it's already been yeah. applied for there, then it's already been applied. I just. But we will try to clear up and clarify that narrative because it sounds like dollars are coming from multiple sources mm -hmm. to help with the project. So I think maybe outlining that a little bit more clearly will help. Does anyone else have any questions for Shanna? To we're not voting. No, on that. Just I do have a question then. Why why are we using HTK on this, but we use DLR on other stuff? <coughs> and your questions are going to be um, directed <laughs> I know you wouldn't have towards answer, Rusty, right? but um, that is interesting. I had well, talked to Rusty. He did say that HTK had familiarity with the experience and the design in that area because of previous work that had been done and past bond issues, and I believe that's why they're working on the project. Well, my question is: is years ago we chose a we went through a, an elaborate process of interviewing architects and selecting a, an architect. And HTK, I believe, well, they may not have been, but they, at one point we selected them. Then yeah. when I wasn't on the board, it was my understanding DLR was selected, but um, like Oak Park, DLR were paying, but they're not doing the architect work. A firm out of Salina is doing it because it's too small of a project. And then this project HTK is doing, and it just seems to be kind of counterproductive to selecting one if they're not going to do our work. And just, it would seem we'd use one for everything and not two. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a reason to use two, but if there is, I guess we should hear about it. Right. The only information I would have is what Sarah is sharing at this point that we can let yeah, rest. I, it's more of a, it's not process. really tied to that issue as it is more of a procedural issue of why and how. Anyone else have any questions for Shanna to pass along? Okay. Next, we'll move on to the next two items. Um, dissolving the Oak Park Condominium Association and the Oak Park Medical Complex Tax Exemption, exemption Application. Bill's going to present on both of these, but Sarah alerted me several weeks ago that despite that these are on new business, that there was going to, no, we don't need action on these tonight? Okay. Never mind. <laughs> that has changed. So I'm gonna let Bill take over for a little bit. Okay, uh, thank you. The first item there, revocation of Oak Park condominium declaration. Uh, a little bit of history. The condominium declaration for Oak Park was formed on August 1st of 1983. Became official by filing in the Ellis County Register of Deeds <coughs> office on August 23rd of 1983. Uh, and the, the purpose of that was once those improvements were built, they were divided into separate units so you could have separate ownership with the owners all having an undivided 
interest in the common areas. As part of that, they adopt uh, uh, bylaws and rules governing the ownership and, and control over the common areas. A Oak Park Condominium Association, Inc., was formed as a nonprofit corporation. It was filed in the Secretary of State's office on May 18th of 1983. That charter was forfeited on December 12th of 1991 for failure to file annual reports. Uh, at this point in time, the condominium units are now under common ownership, that being the school district, uh, including the common area. So there isn't really any need to have that condominium unit anymore. Uh, I have visited with uh, attorneys from Gilmore and Bell who prepared all the lease purchase agreements with Bank of Hayes. Uh, they see no problem with dissolving the condominium declaration. Uh, and so what, what we'll have to approve would be a revocation of the Oak Park condominium declaration, which also will need to be approved uh, and consented to by the Bank of Hayes, which I visited with the Bank of Hayes, and that's not going to be an issue either. And once that is done, then we'll turn around and file an application for tax exemption. Uh, we'll do that by filing uh, the application with the Ellis County Appraiser's Office, who I've also visited with. And that shouldn't be a problem either. Uh, there's a place on the application form where they present their feeling, which will obviously it's for school municipality purpose. So it is exempt, and so that shouldn't be an issue. That application then goes to the Board of Tax Appeals. Uh, neither party will request a hearing, so then the Board, probably in 30 to 60 days, will just issue an opinion providing that tax exemption. <coughs> okay. So then when we're done, the property will be exempt from taxation dating back to the purchase date. and. Uh, It'll be under one common ownership with no condominium unit. And we'll go from approximately seven or eight pages of legal descriptions to Lot 1, Block 9, Golden Belt, 8th edition to the City of Hayes. So, anybody have any questions? We still have to go through the tax exemption procedure even though that's yes. just by default then, huh? Yeah. <coughs> I mean, there, there would be some, some instances where even if the property was owned by the school district, it may not be it for an exempt purpose, so it could still be taxed. Okay, thank Any you. Any questions for Bill? Bill, what are, what are actually, are, maybe you just said, what, what are the taxes right now on that building? Uh, boy, I have no idea. I'm just curious because it's, it's good for us that it's going to be tax exempt, but we also lose I, that, that money as far as we're funding. I do like not that. know. So. Mm -hmm. I can find out. Uh, just curious. Okay. I'm sure we'll, we can hear it on the other one. No biggie. <coughs> Moving on, the next thing is the Hayes High School Special Systems Renovation Bids. Mandy, I'm going to declare a conflict of interest since Nextech is a company that's on this bid and I'm obviously employed by Nextech, so okay. I'm going to step out. Again, and this will not need action, but you can, you have the materials in front of you. Um, the recommendation is to approve the base bid from Nextech. Um, Rusty did talk about this, the special systems renovation project. Um, as you can see, there were three bids. It's just the base bid we'll be looking at, even though there were some alternates there. The base bid work is um, what's being recommended. I know Scott has worked some with Rusty on this, so if there were any questions, he is here and may be of help in answering them. Hey, Scott, can you just kind of explain as far as, I know Rusty kind of went over some of this, and maybe I misunderstood some of it. I thought he was talking about, is this basically for all the wiring? as far as for within the building there for like cat five and all that or yes so the base bid would be pulling two new cat six data drops terminating certifying them into uh, each classroom as well as the work to the intercom and the wireless clock system and do we and, and i'm just asking just remind do we not have any people that can pull the cat five as far as whether it's maintenance because i know we have on certain things i know like the wireless the, the access points some of that stuff they went through and pulled some of that but with this being, 
I guess the scale of the project that it is and with other summer projects uh, just I don't think we were going to have the the hands around the summer to do that gotcha. and since we were doing the clock system anyway uh, if we're on ceiling tiles opened up it made just as much sense to pull the the cable that way too gotcha what's the IT staff what numbers do you guys have I mean yourself and who else? Uh, right now, there's five of us in the department. Uh, myself is the director, and then we have a student software systems admin, a systems admin, and then uh, two techs. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Sir, would you mind grabbing? Oh, I do oh, have sorry. one other question. Okay. Uh, can we get the the actual responses to these, like we got on the roof bids? Oh, right, the bids yes. themselves. Sure. I will make sure they're attached for the next agenda. Thank, Thank you. you. And would you like them emailed out before then? I have yes, them please. tomorrow. I don't know. Just when you send out the board or the packet would be fine with me. Wait, they're not on the on the following page, or am I miss? The okay. summation is, but, but not, the, not the actual response. Oh, I got you. Like, okay. Response to the request. Gotcha. Thanks. You know, the breakdown of labor and materials, if, right, they, if it right. is done that way. Okay. Yeah, oh, could you grab Luke, please? <coughs> I think so. All right. As soon as Luke gets it back down, does anybody have any additional discussion? or a member or uh, agenda request that Shanna needs to pass along or Keith or Sarah? Well, maybe one for Keith here is that, although it's, it's early and maybe it's, I'm asking at the wrong time, you know, listen to some of the things that are being pushed through the legislature that have the potential to actually take away any budget increases we've had. I don't know where that may not come to fruition or may get cut off. But beginning to run some possible scenarios is we, if, depending on where we are in the negotiations, because that dramatically impacts what we can and can't do. And some of those are pretty radical changes, and some are <coughs> status quo. I just don't. I don't have a good feel. Uh, it makes it very hard to make any decisions one way or the other. It definitely sounds like there's not going to be any more money this year. No, and it, it, I'm more concerned about the allotment of taking money away for the last two years and paying back. So yeah. that's the one that has been most rattled. Yeah. Everything. And I'm not sure when we'll know. Yeah, I know. I, it's, so it just it's makes it hard to move forward forward with negotiations if we're on sand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have any, I know. any okay. more info than what we're reading. It changed daily. I didn't check it today to see where things yeah, were. Yeah, I was looking at it from Saturday and it was going mm -hmm. Well, Keith, I was hoping to be a miracle yeah. for performing, KASB, but okay. KASB in the last 10 years. Wouldn't KASB have some folks that track this stuff? Well, right. this was, that's, I got mine from a different report. Yeah, okay. For other reasons, but it was in there and I read it and I go, oh, mm -hmm. not good. Not, not good to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. We do at times get printouts. It just depends if they're going to run the numbers, whether there's the certainty. They could be running numbers every day as things change. So at some point when they feel like it's a, if they have a good enough picture, Day or KSDE will send us something and I know I'm visiting with John as far as the timeline for negotiations we need to um, the executive session is to decide because the letter needs to be sent and noticed so by the end of March so we will need um, an exec session to look at those things we talked about the last time but not anticipating that negotiations or the group would meet till probably June until we know more financially yeah, I, I there's no that there's some real a lot of room in what we'll actually have. It looked like it was going to be pretty smooth very early in the process. It's really got that hand. Yeah. And then there's a question of veto and then being able to override a veto, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. But maybe as, as we go on, I think we we'll do what we can. Okay. But and I know there's probably six months. Okay. Anything else for agenda requests? Okay, then according to Shanna, we do need an executive session. Um, and I just want a gender request. I mean, tonight we did it and we've done it ever since I got back on the board, but we have these discussions about whatever, whether it be Chromebooks or the uh, 
bond issue and we have these discussions and say, well, let's do this, let's do that. And unless we vote on it as a board or the board, the board president has the authority to put it on the agenda three or three or the, at the request of three board members or it needs to be voted on. And I think one of the confusions and I've heard back from at least one staff person that they were appreciative of making a motion on the technology. So it was clear what the board wanted instead of two or three of us saying one thing and, you know, and, and we think we know what they want, but they don't. So. So if it's on there, you're asking for, if there I needs direction given to make a motion so it's official direction? I think if you're requesting something, you should make a motion to get whatever you're asking for and be specific. Then I would make a motion for a, although we've noted it, to have a board work session to discuss the bond issue. I'll second. Which had a second. Make a second. On it. That's right. Okay. It's been moved by board member Adams, second by board member uh, Walker. Are you wanting this prior to the change in the super? Are you wanting this before? Me? Yeah, you. Oh. You made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the action of this really is not, you know, the super does is we direct on that. So I think it's, I don't think, I think it could be done before we get a super. Okay. That's my opinion. So are you asking for Sarah to send out a doodle poll for? I'm asking for Sarah to send out a doodle poll. Potential times. Very good. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded that we have a special work session to discuss the bond. Uh, Sarah will send out a doodle poll to start gathering times. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Okay. Motion passes 6-1. I did have a comment on that. Um, I've noticed <laughs> I've noticed in the past that we haven't had agendas at facility meetings, facility planning meetings. So I wonder if that would help structure it if we actually had an agenda for facilities planning meeting. Okay. So once we get a date. Well, the question would be who's going to set the agenda? What's right. on it? Yes. Um, those are all things that. <coughs> Well, you, well, whatever was set, you would hope it was set beforehand, but, yeah, it, I mean, it, who's setting the agenda? Is it us? Is it John? Is it board president? Board president. Sweet. It is board president. All right. Any other comments, questions, concerns for the good of the cause? All right, we will move into exec session. Shanna, are you the only one that needs to be in there at this point? Well, really, Bill and Keith are your designated negotiators, so. Uh, Keith is, Bill is. Oh yeah, not Bill, sorry, but Keith is. Okay, so, so Keith, does he know what we need to be doing? Keith? He needs to be part of the discussion. Okay, so, so yes. okay, gotcha, all right. 10, 15 minutes? Probably district admin and the board. As long as, yeah, we started it, if you all feel like 10, 15 will do. Okay. I think that's fine. All right, I move the Board of Education recess into executive session under the following exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act pursuant to the employer-employee negotiations exception. The subject to be discussed during executive session is negotiations between the Board of Education and the HNEA. Open session will resume in this room at... I think your five to ten is not enough. I think you're gonna need twenty minutes. Okay. Eight fifteen. Those persons to in addition to the Board of Education are um, district admin. Bill, do you wanna go? I don't know that Bill needs to go, does he? Uh, I think just district admin and the Board of Education. So all those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. 